Hello there, and welcome to another Starfield video. This is going to be part three of our uh, weapon series in which I look at some of my favorite, or, well, not favorite, but kind of some of the more interesting weapons in the Starfield universe. So this episode, we're going to be focusing on the rifles, uh, be it sniper rifles or the more marksman rifles. Now, technically in-game, all the rifles in the game are, be it snipers or assault rifles, are just kind of under one kind of banner. But from a playstyle point of view, there's a big difference in an assault rifle and a sniper. So we've got five weapons this time uh, of various styles. So we're going to start off with the first one. We've got the uh, Advanced Hard Target. Now, uh, like with my, my ship build videos, uh, one of the things to note with the weapons um, is that the, the, no, the name after the weapon... Now, this is only um, when the weapon hasn't been modified, because if you modify a weapon, it adds a load of different names. But... Basically, weapons are um, broken into tiers. So we've got basic, calibrated, refined, and advanced. There's four tiers for um, four tiers for the weapons, and there's five for armors. Just so you know. So advanced being the higher tier, you tend to see advanced weapons start to drop around, depending on the weapon, around level level twenty six. Obviously, on the higher end weapons, you know, it's going to be more up close to fifty. So if we take a look at this bad boy, so what's quite interesting with the Starfield universe, some kind of element of the gun gun world that they kind of take and kind of run with, is the idea of bullpup weapons. So I'm no one expert, so if I say anything that is wrong, I've got a few gun nuts in the comments that will be able to correct me. Uh, but um, bullpup weapons are quite, um, they're not as popular kind of as they should be in my opinion. The concept of a bullpup weapon is most guns, uh, you think your standard M4 or your AK, the magazine is mounted in front of the trigger system, as is the mechanism for firing the gun. The, uh, whereas a bullpup, it mounts it behind the trigger mechanism. And the point of that is to get uh, a longer barrel without increasing the size of the weapon. So one of the kind of the prominence of a bullpup is bullpups are generally kind of easier to wield because that heavy, big, heavy barrel, especially with the, with the considering, like, say, snipers, it kind of stretches the whole length in inward backwards, which is kind of interesting. Also, bullpup weapons are easier to kind of aim and use in close quarters. Now, obviously, in this case, wouldn't recommend wielding this close quarters, but, you know, for some of the other weapons in the Starfleet universe. Yeah, so it's bullpup's quite a cool weapon. So if you take a look at this weapon itself, you can see it has that big metallic looking barrel. Really cool barrel. It's got a screw there for, I'm assuming, a suppressor. And then it's got the, that kind of like, almost like the, uh, the M, I think it's the M1A1 and the M2, uh, Browning, uh, 30 and 50 cal machine guns. They have that kind of the barrel shroud for cooling, I think it's called. It's kind of a cool, cool design. Um, it almost looks like they did take the barrel off a 50 caliber or a 30 cal, uh, machine gun from, you know, World War One, World War Two. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, kind of polymers on it, which I really like, made by Combat Tech. That's got that hard target, 50 caliber, which is pretty cool. So we look at the stats. It's got a uh, base damage of 284. It's got a uh, fires, fires point 50 caliber, so a pretty big round. Mag base mag of five, 25 fire rate, range of 136. 74.7 accuracy at a mass of 9.15 so one of the things you're going to notice with these kind of weapons is the range is very high for it because they are a, a larger kind of you know they're a sniper rifle effectively and then the mass this thing is quite heavy which is kind of interesting because if we like take a look at it in the character's hands it i'll just actually go back if we take a look at it in the character's hands it doesn't look all that larger than you would think for a 50 caliber gun now that might be because the barrel might be a lot heavier who knows what sort of metal it's made of. It might be made of a, a more heavier metal because we are in the sci-fi universe in the future. Let's take a look at some of the modifications. So starting off with the barrel, we've got quite a lot of barrels. So the standard barrel here, just, you know, standard issue. Stabilizing barrel uh, opts to use some uh, mag-assisted, uh, specialized mag-assisted barrels. Vastly increase accuracy and recoil control at the cost of ADS speed while standing still. Uh, which, in this case, it doesn't actually seem to do anything stat-wise, as you can see, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we've got the long barrel, which increases your accuracy, recoil, and range at the cost of ADS. Now, with a sniper rifle, unless you're trying to quickscope like them uh, pros from the COD eras, you don't really need to worry too much about ADS. So this long barrel, it increases the range astronomically, so an extra 30 range, and then an extra 1 accuracy. 
it does make it a little bit more, or 1% accuracy, it does make it a little bit more heavier. We've got the fluted barrel, which is a lighter barrel with increased accuracy and recoil. Generally, fluted barrels have kind of channels cut out of the exterior to make it lighter, which is kind of what you can see here. It looks to me that the fluted barrel gives us everything that the long barrel gives us, just the only difference being there's no uh, ADS. And then we have a bull barrel. It's a heavier barrel that increases accuracy and stability, so you'll notice there, again, accuracy seems to be the same, and the range seems to be the same. I'm assuming the difference will be in-game recoil. Uh, I'm going to opt for the fluted barrel, just because that kind of, like, lower recoil. Laser sights, again, you've seen this before. Laser sights, uh, attachment to help with target acquisition and accuracy. And then recon laser sight. So for this situation, I'm going to, even though this one at the bottom gives us better uh, aiming, I'm going to go with this one because it helps with target acquisition, which basically means, in, in layman's terms, usually that means aim assist. For scopes, we've got a long scope, medium scope, recon scope, and a reflex. So the reflex is just quick. Uh, recon is marks them while aiming. Medium scope is four times. Long scope is 6.5 times. So for the sake of these snipers, we're going to be opting for the highest zoom scopes just to kind of showcase the range at which they are, you know, versatile. Now for the um, for the muzzle components, we've got your standard one. We've got a muzzle brake, which increases long range accuracy and stability at the cost of hip fire accuracy. We've got a compensator that increases stability and hip fire accuracy at the cost of long range accuracy. And then we've got a suppressor. Oh, that's a very big suppressor. So, generally speaking, with this sort of a gun where you only have a short mag and you're not going to be firing very fast, compensators aren't really meant for this sniper. Muzzle brakes are definitely an option if you want to have that kind of, like, more precise shooting. But because it's a sniper, and just because that looks sick, we're going to go with the suppressor, which gives us an increase in our range. Um, actually gives us a better increase than the... Then our muzzle brake, which uh, if the gun notes in the comments would let me know. Does a suppressor on a sniper rifle platform, would a suppressor give better um, kind of accuracy than a muzzle brake? And also, obviously, we're going to... Uh, we lose a little bit of range, obviously, but that's not, a, that's not a huge thing in regards because being able to fire silently is the kind of strat. So for the grips, we've got two sets of grips. We've got a standard grip and a tactical grip. So much like with the fluted barrel, the uh, tactical grip is a lighter grip that increases ADS, uh, reload, and stability. And it seems to do that by kind of cutting out some of the pieces so you can see there. Makes it a little bit lighter, so we're going to go with that just because. For the magazine, we've got quite a lot of rounds here. So we got a standard mag, we've got a tactical mag that uh, lightens the load a little bit and increases ADS and reload speed. We've got white hot rounds that are chemically tipped rounds that burn on contact. They do wood energy damage. We have penetrator rounds, powerful rounds that can pass through multiple targets. Bumps the damage up to 340.7, which is insane. We have the large magazine, which increases the ammo up to 10 at the cost of uh, reload speed and stuff. And then we have armor piercing rounds, which brings us up to 312. So... With regards to, sorry, I to pause there. So with regards to your your kind of your specs, it, it seems very much so that these penetrator rounds are a more powerful armor piercing in some regard. Now what's kind of interesting here is that we don't have the um, the depleted uranium rounds that's quite common on some of the other rifles. So for this case, we're going to go with the penetrator because on a sniper you would like to have as much damage as possible. For the internals, we have the option for high powered, high velocity, or nothing. Uh, high velocity increases the velocity of the round, uh, so actually in range, um, which is, it bumps it up to uh, 84.8, so an extra four. And then we've got high power, which basically bumps up the damage again. Something that's kind of interesting is that there is no velocity um, stat in game, and that's something that, like, I don't know if it's... A lot of games don't really show velocity, but it's kind of a big deciding factor with a lot of guns. I'm assuming in-game the velocity, high velocity, would affect that. 
um, just because the the quicker you can get your round on target, that means the more accurate it is. You know, you don't have to equate it for much bullet drop. So we're going to go with high power. And yeah, so that's it. So now we're going to go try it out in our usual spot. All right, so we're just coming up on the target now. I'm going to try and get as close, but what, sadly, uh, this location seems to have a kind of a natural defense in this rock way. So we're going to try and do a bit of sneaking. Okay, that's a bit too slow. We're going to get a bit closer. All right. Target number one spotted. The alert. There's something out there. Oh, I killed him. As you can see, it's this recoil is very manageable. It kicks quite high, but it comes back on target almost immediately. Now, obviously, you could operate on a shorter zoom scope if you wanted to. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not sniped in this game uh, very much, just because I prefer kind of getting in close. You have very little, no bullet sway or uh, scope sway at all, which is really, really nice. All in all, it's a pretty solid weapon. If you get a legendary version with instigating, you could definitely, you definitely kind of hit a lot harder. Nice headshot, there we go, perfect. There's also a perk you can get for your uh, jump pack where you can hover while ADSing. And I feel like it would be played perfect for the alt, like the sniper route. I apologize, I'm actually a subpar. You wouldn't, you'd be shocked to believe that I love sniping in games like Halo. I think it's because of the lack of aim assist. Um, yeah, that was the, that was the hard target. We're going to now jump on to our second weapon on the list. Alright, so the second weapon on our list, and arguably the most powerful weapon in the game, we've got the Advanced Mag Sniper. The Mag Sniper is used by Magtech, um, uh, which is a creation, uh, it's it's a type of, like, kind of weapon uh, designed by uh, Core Kinetics, they're based in Neon. It's pretty much a railgun, and in a lot of the other Mag weapons, they're kind of like a non-conventional railgun, whereas this bad boy appears to be an actual railgun. It has those rails, or could potentially be a Gauss gun. I'm not too sure on the distinction, but I know that one uses magnets, uh, electrified magnets, and the other uses... Actually, I'm not sure. Again, gun nuts, please help me. Uh, but yeah, it's, this is literally the, the kind of your anti-material rifle of, like, you know, the fallout industry. Uh, this is your bad boy. Uh, it's got a damage of 518. It fires 6.5 millimeter MI, which is uh, magnetic induction, I believe I was told. Um, it's got 12 rounds of the mag, which is quite a lot. Fire rate is 17. It's quite low uh, for a fire rate. It's got a range of 130. Accuracy of 86.5, and it's pretty heavy at 9.5. Uh, I'm assuming that's pounds or maybe kilos. So we take a look at some of the modifications. So straight off the bat with the barrel, we've got your standard barrel. You've got a stabilizing barrel, which is a mag-assisted barrel that increases accuracy and recoil at the cost of ADS uh, while standing still. And then you've got the long barrel, which increases accuracy, recoil, and range. So we're going to go with long barrel just because it increases all of our stats. Laser again, we're just going to go with a recoil, recon sight. I don't know where it goes though, that's the only thing. I, I kind of wish Bethesda, wish they'd uh, have kind of made it visible. Recon sight increases ADS, uh, or accuracy and marked enemies. Scope wise, again we're going to go for our long range scope. Uh, it seems like scope and sniper kind of elements, they all have the same. Recon scope marks while aiming. Medium is four times, and long range is six times. Muzzle. We have no muzzle. We have a muzzle break, which increases long range accuracy and stability of the cause of hip fire. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, 
I am not sure how a muzzle brake would work on a railgun because um, railguns, for the most part, the recoil isn't is very much backwards. Like it's like a what is that? The Newton's cradle action. Every action is an opposite reaction. A railgun is going to kick backwards. It will not kick up. Whereas muzzle brakes are usually designed to kind of force the barrel down. To, I believe. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. We've got a compensator which increases stability and accuracy at the cost long. We're not going to be using that realistically. And then we've got the um, shock bands, which is an electric device that attaches burst energy as the rounds pass through it. Now, it doesn't say it does much, but it does add a damage over time, so we're going to go with that one. Magazine and battery. We've got some, uh, so we got a tactical mag, which is lighter mag that increases ADS speed and reload. Standard mag. We've got penetrator rounds. Bring up the damage to 600, an extra 100. And that allows it to ma pass through multiple enemies. Now, I will say, passing through multiple enemies, these penetrator rounds, I should have said in the last uh, review or the last weapon, it's kind of very situational. The only situation I could see these being useful is if you're hunting, uh, uh, like, game. Like, you know, like, alien creatures on planets, because they tend to bunch up. I've never really been in a situation where enemies tend to kind of bunch up frequently. Uh, there's not a lot of very dense kind of fights in Starfield. So we got the large mag, which increases the mag to 28. Depleted uranium rounds brings the damage to 570. Can now penetrate any armor. And then armor piercing kind of does the same thing. So interestingly, penetrator rounds bring the damage up a lot more. You would assume depleted uranium would be the better. But we're, just because we're, we're chasing stats, we're going to go with the penetrator rounds. For the internal, we have high, no, nothing. high velocity, which increases accuracy and range. High power, which again increases the damage. And a hair trigger, which increases your fire rate. So we're going to go with high power because that increase the damage is very nice. Now we're going to head to our usual spot and we're going to start shooting people. All right, here we are. We're hunting the most dangerous creature in the settled system. Man. Slash woman. Slash they them. I'm not trying to get cancelled in uh, 2330, I think it is. All right, so now this thing is not going to be silent. Now you can charge this railgun round. As you can see, it's uh, not very quiet. Which is kind of cool, though, that you can charge it. Those idiots have no idea where I am. Actually, that's a lie. They know exactly where I am. So you can also shoot without charging. So we're going to try that. As you can see, it doesn't do nearly as much damage. Ready to fire. I personally am not a huge fan of charging, like, these kind of railgun-y type things. Um, even though, is it, like, I wish it kind of, a uh, someone with knowledge let me know. Is this a railgun? I don't know if it is. Because it seems more like a kind of an... Because obviously railguns use electricity and stuff, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of magnetics to this. But then I suppose that the, the name of the round is the magnetic induction. But as you can see, it hits very hard when I can actually. And let me see if I can get the. Um... I'm also playing on very hard difficulty as usual. So if we hit him real quick with a round, as you can see, there's a little bit of damage over time. See there? Again, a little bit of damage over time. You can see it, it seems to tick a little bit. Now, it's nothing massive, but it's it's definitely, like, it's noticeable. Oh. One of the downsides of the uh, recon scope is it makes you think you can shoot them when you can Something to note with this is when you charge the uh, railgun, it shakes a little bit. You got some vibration, which isn't a huge issue. But if you're trying to take a more longer range shot, it's definitely harder to hit. Come on, peek your head. I definitely would opt against using the uh, recon scope with this gun. That's pretty much it for this gun. We're going to jump now to the next one. Alright, so next on the list we have the um, old 
Advanced Old Earth Hunting Rifle. This is the VSS, the, uh, I think it's called the VS Ventores. It's a sniper that was developed uh, by the Russians, uh, Russian Spetsnaz. It uh, fires a quite unique cartridge 9x39, which if you're somewhat familiar with guns, you would think, oh, okay, 9mm, that's not a big round, but by Jesus, that's a big round. Uh, while it's the same length as your standard 9mm in a pistol, like, you know, your M9, it's a lot wider. And a 9x39 rounds, uh, I think intrinsically they have a lot more armor piercing power. It's a very cool looking gun. It's got that kind of Russian AK aesthetic. It's quite popular and I used to love it in DayZ because 9x39 is a subsonic uh, round, I believe. Which means that after a certain distance, there is no crack. So, for instance, if you're shooting at somebody and they're, let's say, outside of, like, the distance, let's say they could be, like, five, six hundred meters, uh, they won't, unless, if you're missing them, they won't hear the snap, which is really, really cool. Again, go nuts if I'm being completely wrong on this, and I do base a lot of my stuff off of kind of a mix of, like, uh, YouTube documentaries and stuff, and Daisy, but Daisy is quite accurate. Quite a cool gun, uh, as you can see. Damage, it's more of a kind of a carbine, or not a carbine, more of a marksman rifle than like a sniper, but still, it's it kind of fits the role quite well. So it's got a damage of 106, it fires that 9x39. Base mag of 20, 40 fire rate, 130 range, 3.15, quite a light rifle. And uh, one of the things I like about this is I feel like it's the perfect kind of post-apocalyptic weapon. It's got that kind of like that ruggedness, uh, we got the wood. I just, yeah, it's it's internally or integrally suppressed, I believe is the correct term. So let's look at the modifications. Sadly, I don't think there's very many modifications for this, but we will check. Okay, so we just have the option for a laser sight, which is kind of ironic because... Is that not a laser sight already? So we're going to laser sight increase the accuracy. We're going to go with that. Um, whoops, did not mean to do that. This is a weapon, when I found it, I like freaked out because I'm a really big fan of this gun. So magazine, we've got your standard mag, which is 20, small mag of 12, and then we've got your armor piercing, which is more powerful casings that can penetrate, increase the damage. We're obviously going to go with armor piercing. Internals, we have a hair trigger, high power or high velocity. High velocity just increases the accuracy um, by a little bit and the range by a little bit. Uh, high power increases the damage by like an extra 16 and then hair trigger increases the fire rate by 8% so we're gonna go with high power now let's go check this bad boy out shall we we'll kind of start out from running because I have a little point I want to make about this so the uh, the VSS there is also a variant called the ASVAL or the ASVAL which is kind of more of an SMG variant uh, the main kind of difference is it doesn't have the big scope and it has a, a kind of a mount for more kind of standard close range optics like red dots and it has a more kind of standard AK style um, uh, stock but it's interesting that they didn't give you the option to swap it to more of an ASVAL like they could have gave a receiver mod that would have increased the fire a little bit but yeah it's it's you know it's Bethesda I will say they did a decent job on the scope in terms of like the Russian scope, it's quite accurate, um, at least to my knowledge. Again, I may be a bit, bit uh, inaccurate. So let's see. Looking for targets. Target spotted. As you can see, very quiet gun, extremely quiet. When I can hit the target. One of the things I think would be quite cool about this firearm is if it did have that intrinsic kind of um, ability where enemies wouldn't react to your target, uh, to you shooting them if you were missing. But obviously that's not the case because that would be very hard to code into a game like this. But as you can see, very, very quiet. And it's quite... It's quite... um, Got a quite decent fire rate. So if there is a situation where you uh, will maybe not get fire, but if you were to kind of barrel stuff someone like in this situation, you can definitely mag dump them, which I quite like. I wish there was an option to take the scope off the gun and maybe like mount like just a, an iron sight 
Maybe, um... Well, this iron sight seems quite inaccurate. Like, I've got a, a bit of experience firing these guns in other... Any game that has any uh, uh, BSS, I'm, like, all about it. It seems to me that the scope isn't zeroed correctly, which would be kind of ironic, because... This gun has been existed, like it's called the Old Earth Rifle, so it would make sense if it was a bit out of whack. Just setting a fire. Nice quick reload there. Yeah, this is probably hands down like my favorite gun in the game. I'd use it more, but like I said, it's very situational. It's great for if you're kind of playing a sniper, like a stealth sniper. As you can see, the um. I don't know if that's the accuracy. Right, I'm just going to test down it a minute. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to fire a couple of rounds at the wall. This box. Okay, so it's. It's kind of accurate, but yeah, it might just be a kind of a, might be that I'm bad. Anyway, we're going to head to our next weapon. Alright, so weapon number four is the, um, the Beowulf. Now this, not technically on the same realm as some of the other rifles. I kind of wanted to add it because uh, some people prefer a kind of a more marksman-oriented rifle, like a rifle with a lot more in the mag. Um, kind of more akin to the, um kind of the DMRs from, like, kind of, like, uh, Halo or, like, uh, the scout rifles from games like Destiny. So it's, again, this is made by Combat Tech. As you can see, a lot of similarities between the hard target, uh, same color scheme. Uh, funnily enough, this one is, uh, fires 7.77 millimeter, which is kind of a big round. Um, I don't know if 7.7 millimeter would fit in that. Potentially, it, it might. You never know, actually. It could be. Uh, it's got like a kind of a uh, PDW kind of P90 style mag, uh, which is kind of cool. It also has, interestingly enough, you can see the entire barrel. But what's kind of weird to me is clearly it's another bullpup. The mechanism is the mechanism is somewhere around that Beowulf where you see that Beowulf writing. But there's still like barrel extended backwards. I don't know why that is. Um, maybe Gonots might be able to explain, is that like a common thing, or is that just Bethesda doesn't know guns? It does seem a bit weird to me. Uh, so if we look at the stats, 36 damage, which isn't a lot, but then again, this is more of a rapid-fire kind of scout-type rifle. 7.77 millimeter, 30 rounds in the mag, 150 fire rate, 55 range, 85 accuracy, and 3.95 weight. So it's not a heavy gun. So we check some of the modifications. So we have, for the barrel, we've got your standard barrel, your short barrel, and your long barrel. And uh, this is kind of one of those situations where if you wanted to opt for, like, more of a kind of a close-range kind of scout-type rifle, you could go with the short barrel. But because we're covering snipers, I want to see, like, how effective it is at its max range. Probably with the short barrel, ADS, uh, cost actually and recoil. Makes sense. Long barrel to the opposite. Actually, in recoil and range, the cost of ADS, which we're going to go with that one. The optic, we've got medium scope this time, not a long range scope, which is kind of interesting. So we can mount the four times optic. We can mount an iron sight, a reflex sight, which increases um, target acquisition, and a short scope, 2.5. So I'm going to go with the medium because, you know, muzzle, we can have a compensator, a muzzle brake, a standard muzzle, or a suppressor. Suppressor, obviously, uh, Vastly reduces acoustic intensity, so silent, suppressed weapon, so it's not as loud. Uh, while increased accuracy at the cost of range. Standard muzzle, muzzle break, increases accuracy at the cost of hip fire, and then compensator. Uh, increased stability and hip fire accuracy at the cost of uh, long range accuracy. So I'm probably going to go with the compensator, just because usually compensators are meant to kind of compensate for more rapid fire, you know which we already have installed. For the grips, we've got uh, tactical grip, or standard grip, 
Tactical Grip, which just kind of cuts down. It's lighter than Ergonomic, which... Uh, potentially adds nothing, but... Okay, so... Ergonomic basically makes actually an ADS. So we're going to go with that one. Already installed. Laser, interestingly, we have, which is kind of cool, and I wish... I don't know why Bethesda didn't include other guns. So we've got the standard foregrip, which is at the front. I, is that really called a foregrip? Oh, it would be a foregrip. Yeah, okay. And then we've got a foregrip with a recon laser mounted in sight, or a foregrip with a laser sight. Quite cool. More guns should definitely do that. Obviously, the foregrip with recon marks enemies and creates, creates accuracy. Laser sight, target acquisition. I'm going to go with laser sight because we've seen what happened with the recon. Magazine, we can have tactical mag, standard mag, or armor piercing. I'm going to go with the... Interestingly, there's no difference in the... I suppose it makes sense that this gun wouldn't really have, like, increased uh, magazine capacity, because how would you do that? But we're going to go to armor piercing, just because that extra damage. And then for the internals, we have hair trigger, high power, or high velocity. High velocity increases actually in range. High power increases the damage, and hair trigger makes it fast fire rate. We're going to go with high power. Honestly, like... Hair trigger usually increases the fire rate by, like, as in this case, 30% or 30. So I'm assuming that's based on how many rounds you can fire a minute. So an extra 30 rounds, it's not a whole lot. And then receiver, we have burst fire, fully automatic and semi-automatic. If we cut it down semi-automatic, we get a lot more out of it. Fire rate is cut, though. So we're going to go with semi-auto just because marksman weapon. That brings the, the damage up to 138. Well, let's go check it out. I didn't realize that I did not pause that. That's kind of awkward. So we're going to be a lot closer, more in their face this time. Just because it's kind of meant to be that. We're still going to use the scope, though. It sounds very beefy. Which I quite like. Obviously, as you can see, we've got... Oh, I like that little kind of latch system. That's kind of interesting. It sounds very beefy. That's kind of cool. It seems it's ambidextrous, which is quite nice. You can definitely rapid fire this gun, which is really, really nice. Even though I'm not hitting, as you can see, it's a lot more accurate while in the air. Because I feel like that's one of the things to note is, like, some people may like kind of being more agile and mobile. And having a gun that kind of handles better in these situations, as you can see, I can kind of strafe around. And generally, the bullet stays on target to an extent. Kind of impressed this gun. I used it briefly. We're in the kind of a role of uh, like a kind of a like a kind of a close range kind of like um, single fire assault rifle, and it definitely did the job. I'd probably opt for uh, having like a different scope on it, just because I feel like this scope doesn't do it justice. You're not really meant to kind of probably use this rifle uh, in the kind of more longer range. Yes, yeah, so that's it. So now we're going to check the last one on the list. All right, 
finally on the list, we have the Advanced Lawbringer, or the Lawgiver. So the Lawgiver is made, it's a Freestar Collective weapon. Uh, I believe it is made by uh, Laredo Arms. They're a company on uh, Aquila. Very, very cool weapon. It, it definitely kind of fits the aesthetic of, like, you can tell this is meant to be Western. We've got that kind of wood effect uh, with, the, like, the kind of the bare metal. But at the same time, it's very much a kind of, a, like, a unique-looking weapon. Really cool. So if we look at the stats of this bad boy, it's got 117 uh, rounds. It's got fires 50 caliber, 6 in the in the, the mag, which I don't think it's a magazine. I believe it's a, a cylinder. Um, I don't know if revolvers are called... No, they're not called magazines. Uh, it's got a fire at a 10, range of 52, actually a 70, and 3.9 mass, which is interesting. Let's go check it out stat-wise. So it's... This is meant to be a kind of a, a kind of a revolving rifle. So barrel, we've got a long barrel and a standard barrel. And I have to say, I love how these guns look. Bethesda did a really good job. Uh, so the st the long barrel increases accuracy and range and recoil at the cost of ADS. But you know, don't worry too much about AB ADS. So for the laser sight, we've got no laser sight or laser sight mounted underneath. Again, very nice. Laser sight just helps with ADS and target acquisition. Optic, we have a reflex sight or iron sight. We've got a recon scope, which includes a kind of a bull bar type thing. It's like a, we have a reflex sight and a short scope. I'm going to add the short scope because it's meant to be a kind of a rifle. Reflex sight, obviously, faster target acquisition, recon scope, barracks enemies, and short scope two times for the muzzle we have a compensator which increases stability and hip fire at the cost of accuracy muzzle break does the opposite accuracy and stability at the cost of hip fire and then we have a suppressor which looks amazing really cool and i would normally go with this but for this we're going to go with the muzzle break just because for magazine we have so we have the tactical mag which increases your uh, lighter mag White hot rounds are chemically tipped that burn on contact. Standard mag penetrator rounds uh, can pass through multiple targets. EM shots um, are non-lethal. Depleted uranium uh, penetrates any armor, and then armor piercing that also penetrates any armor is slightly better. Uh, so the white hot rounds, we're going to try the white hot rounds out because obviously stat wise you'd want the um, depleted uraniums or maybe the penetrator rounds. But we're going to check out the white hots. Internals, you can have a hair trigger, high velocity or um, high power. High power increases the damage. Hair trigger, it's not worth it. An extra two high power. The fire to this gun is going to be limited anyway because you're going to have to be reloading. So yeah, let's go check it out, shall we? Uh, it's just we're walking up. I'd just like to say that I do really like all of these Laredo Arms weapons are really cool. They kind of make me kind of think of... Um, if like metro was based in like the western kind of regions like where you have these kind of manufacturers and i know you might say but that's just fallout and it is kind of true but in metro they kind of make more kind of custom guns like imagine like you know some of the american companies that take more care in like making their guns look very you know nice as you can see it has that it sounds really nice you can hear that that hammer fire back even though there's no... Oh, it's got a very, very cool... It's not interesting. It's not actually a revolving cylinder. It is a magazine. It sounds... You can tell, though. It, it has that revolver-esque kind of look to it. Thanks so some damage. Oh, I can see it's slightly off. I like that, kind of the feet up. I'm kind of surprised, given that it only has six rounds of the mag, I'm surprised they didn't go with a kind of a, a revolving cylinder. Like, you kind of kick it out like uh, that gun from uh, Fallout. But all in all, really, really cool. Damage is a bit lower than you'd kind of be hoping for one of these sort of weapons. But it still kind of serves its purpose. I don't have any uh, perks in sniping. You see that uh the chemical rounds there setting them on fire just kind of nice i'm not 
too sure on the kind of the chemical round stats, but I would assume that when you set them on fire, there's a chance of them basically panicking. That's kind of one of the one of the big things about. I believe also when the enemies are on fire, they take more damage too, which is really nice. It's 20% increased damage. Which in this situation, it's probably more advantageous. It sounds really nice, yeah. Kind of why I didn't want to put a silencer on it or a suppressor, just because it sounds so beefy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, uh, let me know what you think. Um, there's not as many kind of rifle weapons, so obviously there's, you know, I might have missed one or two, but for the most part, these are kind of the main ones. So yeah, let me know which ones you guys uh, like, which ones you're not hugely a fan of, or just in general. And yeah, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like sort of content, and check out some of my other videos. Bye-bye. Uh,